going to fix myself. Your hat is lovely, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, a little thrift shop number. Oh, you still have a job. Yeah. No, honestly, I feel like once you find a good thrift shop, that's like my entire wardrobe becomes that one shop. So I'm just like, what have we got going on today, girls? Yeah. yeah. What? Where is it, or or do you want to gatekeep? Uh, it's in like Islington area. Period. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. Like North London. I actually yeah. won't say the name. I just absolutely don't know the name of it. So. <laughs> It's me gatekeeping, but also just being a dumb bitch. That's fair enough. And I'd say being a dumb bitch is a good way to describe how we both feel this morning. Hey, I'm Baby Queen. Hi, I'm Katie Beza. Hey, this is Ram McMullen. Hi guys, Lara here. Hey, I'm Jim Koala. Hi, I'm Astrid S. And you are listening to Lame Heart. And you're listening to Lame Heart. And you're listening to Lame Heart. It's out now. I really hope you enjoy it. So enjoy. Welcome, Gracie, to Lame Heart. How's it going? Very well. How are you? I'm a little bit fragile this morning. Um, I was out at the weekend and paying what I like to say in Ireland as the crack tax. Okay, um, yes. Oh. And on top of that, I had to take an umbrella out for the first time in weeks this morning. And, you know, it's cold and everything like that. But, you know, we have a chat now and I got to listen to a few bangers in preparation for this this morning. So who's it's a, winning? It's a, a win's a win. A win's a win. A win's a win. And yeah, I'm delighted to have you on because I'd say I was aware of you kind of from a distance for a while, but I hadn't taken the opportunity to like really plunge in and read everything I could and listen to everything I could on the way. And man... You're, you're like, what, what's the word I want to use? You're like, career passport is something else. Oh, thank you. Yeah, career passport. That is, that's a definitely a, a nice little term. Yeah, came up on the spot. So even when I we're know, being... I was like, you oh, are actually this morning. <laughs> <laughs> bringing something out of you today. Love it. I will say when I'm hungover, I get poetic. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I do too, but that kind of just transfers into me crying, so that's fun. Yeah, like that's coming later, but we'll try not to do it on the Zoom when, you know, we're meeting for the first time. This is a safe space, but I understand. Yeah, we could try and hold it off for, for the Zoom call. Yes, wonderful. So when I read all the headlines, I, again, as I said, I was very impressed. I like Brit nomination for Song of the Year. Uh, Platinum Records, nominated for Songwriter of the Year. Like, I knew of you as a singer, but I didn't realise how many songs you'd written. And um, once I saw your your real name, your government name, on the credits, I was like, oh, damn, I've seen I've seen this name a few times. Like, um, again, just the headlines. There's Psycho, Anne-Marie and H, which was in the top five. Ritual, Tiesto and Rita Ora. By Your Side, Jonas Blue and Ray. Loads of more credits with KSI, Megan Trainer, and... Uh, Actually, someone who was on Lame Heart a few months ago, Katie Baser, and turns out we actually, well, I mentioned the song that you wrote for her, I'll Be oh, Here For You. Okay. Yeah, I was I like, yeah, it. I really like that one. Oh, no way, that's it. Yeah, Katie's such a babe, I love her. She's so jokes. Yeah, she's a, a lot of high energy and a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and that she's just like that in the studio as well. Like she's definitely one of those people that like is the same online and offline, which is something like it's quite rare, I think. Like she's really like just chef chef's kiss with that. She's a real one. So yeah, that that song was so fun to write. It was just like us jumping in the studio, like really late at night just jumping around because I feel like you know when you're I feel like I'll just match someone's energy a lot of the time which is kind of what like a songwriter does a lot like you're just there to facilitate when you're the songwriter um so it is a lot of me just like us just egging each other on to be the most ridiculous versions of each other so yeah don't know how we got productive and wrote a song who knows yeah and like to add to what you were saying about her that sort of is that tells the same story i didn't find out until after the fact that she wasn't wearing trousers oh in in your interview uh, yeah she put up a, a story being like oh i have a zoom in 10 minutes and then she was like oh i'm not wearing trousers and i was okay. like cool yeah. 
Well, she's exercising her free will there, and I love it. Good for you, girl. Who exactly. knows? I'm wearing trousers. I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm not. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a skirt. So. Yeah. Well, hey, it's something. <laughs> it's it's something for sure. This is a very family friendly podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've definitely. Up as a dumb bitch like twice, so family <laughs> for all. <laughs> it's okay it's okay the kids are gonna learn that word at some point so they may as well learn it now you tell them that's what i t- tell my mom <laughs> uh yeah adding on to this list that we're still going through there's been the support slots with Anne-Marie, tom grannon jumped on the mic with clean bandit with jack jones craig david among others like as i said the career passport do be stamping yeah she's she's had a couple of stuff on my side for sure. Yeah. It's absolutely <laughs> mad. Well done. <laughs> like Yeah, no, it's been it has been a bit of a silly old journey. I, I feel like my um my career path has just been like so up and down because like I don't know, it's not really been the easiest journey, I'm not gonna lie. Like my I kind of started as a songwriter, but I always wanted to be the artist. I just didn't want to like release music for the sake of it um like I had the opportunity to when I was like really young being a girl band and I was like no I'm like see ya I want to be like see ya and then I was like I'm gonna write the songs and then I'll know when it's the first one so I kind of did that and I worked for like three years trying to get like a record deal and like trying to get everything perfect and wait for the perfect moment and I dropped my first song and then I got vocal nodules like then literally went to the doctor like two weeks after they were like so you cannot sing anymore and i was like 19 like heart broken everything dreams crushed couldn't sing for four months you know it's not exactly the most ideal situation post like signing a record deal not sure the label very happy and then you know recover and then went into covid and i was like you must be kidding me so i'm like a little covid artist which is kind of i think makes a lot of my kind of discography makes sense as well because it's like you can tell where covid era was hitting <laughs> like i was fighting for my life but yeah no it's it's nevertheless I've, i feel like it had to be the way it is you know to get to where i am now which is fun yeah well you're still going strong and we've brought in a new era in the last few months because you used to be with the label and you've since gone independent and you know, I really like I really like what I found from the independent era so far. And I kind of my mind started doing a bit of connections. And it's kind of it reminds me of like Ray's trajectory where she was on a label, went independent and then started putting a bunch of bangers out. How have you found the journey? Yeah, I mean, what's so interesting is me and Ray had the exact same team at the same label. So... I, I knew that. I just wasn't sure if I should be the one to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's it's kind of the, the same situation, but obviously different, we're very different genres, I'd, I would say, in terms of, like, we've obviously both done the dance thing, but um, yeah, it's been, it, leaving my old label was, I'm not gonna lie, it was like a really, really hard situation, because I think, even though they're similar situations, for me, it was like, I was a few years behind in terms of how much music I'd released. So I hadn't, I never quite got my name in uh, enough to like have people really know what my artist project was about. And that was like, I think the most painful thing for me was that I was kind of being put as this like dance feature artist, but all I ever wanted to be was like a- alongside my favorite artists like Charlie and Caroline and um you know the Japanese house like all of those like left of pop kind of girlies um and yeah so I feel like this whole new era was about realigning with what music I really enjoyed releasing and um yeah just kind of making that music and making music that I really um love and then kind of just starting for I feel like a new artist again like completely from scratch because it's been like three years since consistently releasing music. So I feel like she's back at it, new girly, um, and fingers crossed we don't go through another global pandemic. You know, fingers crossed. Yeah, well, it took about a hundred years between, was it Spanish flu or something and COVID? So oh. hopefully- Just enough know. time to 
to to keep you know maybe going on a little headline tour at some point that'll be great Yeah, an album or two would be good yeah in that time. album out oh, that would be a real treat <laughs> yeah, and so far we've had uh, Delirium and Rhetorical Questions. Both of these are bangers, you know, Thank you. as I said. I, as I said, I spent my birthday researching and writing up my notes for this, which meant listening to these and some of your other hits. And a banger is the best thing in the world, I'd say. A lot of people would probably say, like, food. Yes, yes, all those classic birthday treats. But you're thinking, I'm going to listen to that one British girl on the pay, period. Yeah, yeah, getting to know someone new. Yeah, that's fun. Oh, But well, yeah, I'm happy to be a little they're, part of your birthday. that was wonderful. And they're both like very carefree and they're very like soaking up a very present, immediate moment. And I think kind of the soundscape of them really adds to that because the intensity of them being bangers means you can't really focus or reflect too much. Mm, yeah, I think I think um, for me, like it was the first time really seeing music that was about being in love, uh, which is it, it sounds so stupid, but it was like such a big change for me. I've always been like using music as a vent for emotions I never want to say in my real life to my real life friends because I feel like a burden. So it was quite nice to kind of challenge myself in the studio in that way, which is just like, how can I write a song which I love equally as much and means as much to me, but is also something that I could play when I'm not crying, you know? So yeah, that's how they were birthed. That's wonderful. And we're having a slight tone shift now with the new single, Back to Then. It is a bit more chill than the last two, um, but it's also kind of sadder. You're in mourning. And when I read up on the story behind it, it got even sadder in a way, because, you know, it is one thing when you hear a song mourning a relationship, but also then mourning a friendship like really hits you like a bullet. And then you're doing both in the song. Yeah, I mean, for me, this song is less so like about like being sad the relationship's over and it's more, which I always think of it as a sister song to, I've, I released a song a few years ago called What A Waste, which is I think probably one of my favorite songs I've ever done. And the lyric in the chorus is like, what a waste, tears of my twenties gone down the drain, I've got to fall in love again. And this one is like about the same situation, but instead of feeling angry that you're like, you've wasted two years of, you know, you wish you were in that relationship. It's actually about like just missing the person um, and missing the friendship. So it's kind of like a more mature take on What Ways. Cause you know, What Ways came out like maybe two or three months after we'd broken up. So I was heartbroken. Um, but this one, yeah, this is more just like, I, I saw him recently in like a bar and we had a really long chat and, It kind of reminded me like, oh, like this is why we were even close in the first place. And I think that is like a different feeling. It's a, it's like more of a, oh man, like now you can't ever be in my life again, even though we get on really well. Like this is kind of the end of our um, journeys together because like, I know I would find it too painful. I know he would find it too painful. So you just have to kind of be like, cool, love you from afar, like good luck kind of vibes. It's just like a different type of heartache. So I think that's why I wanted to like reflect on it. But it's also like, it's sad, but it's, to me as well, it feels like kind of happy because I'm like, look how far I've come. Like I'm over it, like this is closure. So yeah, it's for the girlies that are like at the end of their heartbreak era. Um, so yeah, it's kind of why I wanted to release it around the same time as, as these. Yeah, and the maturity aspect is like another stamp in the career passport. That's going to be the through line of today's episode. Um, but I suppose it's just good to see that kind of take on things. And it's very refreshing that we're kind of, we've, we, as I said, we've had the banger, we've had the very intensive in the moment thing, but that as much as there's a lot of emotion to back to then, it's, it's very, it's kind, well, not at peace, but it's kind of, it feels very thought through and kind of, There is emotion, but it's not like you're stuck and just acting on emotion. 
because sometimes like an angry song in particular is meant to be acting on emotion. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's more um, like reflective than I think some of my other songs, uh, which I think is just where I'm at in my life anyway. Just like, I'm a reflective girl. My music, I always say is like made for the, like, you know how you'll listen to girlies in, the, in their club, like club girls. I'm the bus home girl. I'm like, uh... you know, in your, your headphones in, you're at the back of the, and you're having a little main character moment. And then you've got like John and like Kyle chit chat and trying to get, go away. I'm having, I'm doing a thing over here. That's what my music's for. And back That's to then, exactly that. Absolutely true. Cause I had you playing on the bus home yesterday. Oh, right. Well, there you go. Do you, you know? Do you Set. Let's go. Well, wasn't actually when I think about it, wasn't playing when I was like getting ready to go out, but was playing on the bus home. It you is, you called it. Yeah, it's just it it just suits even like delirium and rhetorical questions. Like fun in a club just hits different on the way home because the lyric and rhetorical questions can be heard two different ways. Like it is kind of sad if you want to be sad. Um, like one of my favorite artists of all time is Robin. And it's like, that's uh -huh. why I love her so much. It's like, I can be like, I feel dancing on my own or I'm crying. I mean, a deep depression. So, you know, we love a girl that could do both. Yeah. And it's been said before on Lame Heart, but there's nothing we love more than like a sad banger that can be read both ways. Yes. And there's anytime there's a chance to talk about sad bangers, or to promote someone's sad bangers on this. I'm like, yes, what time? When are, when are we available? Yes, and we're in. Yeah, so that's that's it. Back of the bus, girls, let's roll. Perfect. And these three songs so far, uh, taking us on the journey, is there, like, what kind of music do we have coming up? Is there an album in the works? Or do we have some gigs to look forward to? Yeah, definitely we'll be gigging again next year. I think, like, a couple of my um, like online girlies have been like, when's the live shows? I'm thinking I've been touring the same music for like, honestly, like the last three years. Cause I'm, I've like not properly released anything. I've looked really like singles. I had a single with the Chainsmokers last year, which was really cool and like things like that. But I just wanted to get all of my new music out before I kind of do live shows. Um, not all of it, but at least some stuff so it, I can play around and like rejig the vibe of my live shows because I just feel like I've grown and changed a lot as an artist. So I definitely want to kind of rework everything, which is really fun. Like I say, new artist again, <laughs> new old artist. Um, so yeah, definitely next year there'll be a lot more of that. Um, and yeah, the new music will just keep coming, keep rolling out. So yeah, just, it's nice to be consistent again, really. Beautiful, really looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, we'll see you over on this side of the Irish Sea, cause I'll be there, if it happens. Yeah, yeah, I must say the Irish crowd are insane. Like every time I was there in, um, I was in Dublin in April, and it was like, made me cry how much it was like that. Because the thing is, right, when you're a supporting act, because I was a support act, it's like scary, like to do, do a, in, into a crowd where you're like, okay, well, Carol's at the bar chit chatting, like Sue's on her phone. And it's like, actually the Irish crowd, they really do just give it. They really listen. And it's, it, it, it's very much appreciated. Let me just say that. That's great to hear. Well, hopefully the next one, doesn't you don't have to wait too long before it happens and can't wait to hear the rest of the music thank you gracie for coming on to lame heart today thanks so much yeah lovely to chit chat and i hope the hangover goes away perfect <laughs>